God's word is your answer, always. The Holy Spirit has answers for you, and I don't know what it is that you're going through, but God cares about it. I want us to go over to Luke chapter 8 today and continue to press in and look at this woman with what the Bible calls an issue of blood. But it's so much bigger than that. As we look at the, the parallel, and we look at the prophetic meaning of this woman, this elder woman that had this issue of blood, and this young daughter that seemingly is dead, it will also show us what God is doing in the earth right now. It's a now word and how your individual purpose fits into the bigger plan of God. Let's get into the word. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 through 55. I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified. It says, Now as Jesus was returning to Galilee, the people welcomed him, for they all had been expecting. That's where I want you to be right now, with the spirit of expectation. Now a man named Jairus, a synagogue official, came to him, and he fell at Jesus' feet and began begging him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old. And as Jesus went, the people were crowding against him, it says, almost crushing him. So get a picture of this. They're pressing up against Jesus. There's this massive crowd, and they're almost crushing him. This is going to be significant because verse 43 says, And a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage, a woman having an issue of blood, for 12 years, and had spent all her money on physicians and could not be healed by anyone, she came up behind him and she just touched the fringe of his outer robe. And immediately her bleeding, her issue stopped. Now let me talk to you about that for a moment. They're crushing him. This woman has an issue of blood. So she, number one, she lives in isolation. She's not supposed to be in a crowd. She spent all of her money. She has a health crisis and an issue. I don't know what your issue is. Maybe it is a health crisis. Maybe it's a marital crisis. Maybe it's a child crisis or a business crisis or financial crisis. But whatever that issue is, if you'll just press through everything that's trying to keep you out, hold you back, and she says she touched, the Greek word is to attach. If you'll attach yourself, she actually touched his prayer shawl. If you'll just attach yourself to Jesus right now, I believe that that virtue, that healing power, that wholeness, is going to flow through you before the end of this program, and you too will have an end to your issue in the name of Jesus. Now, there's a reason for that. There's a big reason. I want you whole. I want you living your utmost life with Jesus Christ. But I also know that you're part of God's bigger plan. And if you stay in a place where you just keep bleeding, you keep hemorrhaging, you keep in this sickness, you keep in this cycle, you keep in this anger, then it's going to impact the entire body. Let's keep reading. Jesus said, who touched me? While they all were denying it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the people are crowding and pushing up against you. But, but you say, someone did touch me? Because I was aware the power to heal, King James says the virtue, had gone out of me. That's the same word as dunamis, that dynamite power, the same power that came down on the day of Pentecost. And when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling and she fell down before him. And she declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she was immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in me has made you well. And while he was still speaking, someone from the synagogue's official house came and said to Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Do not inconvenience the teacher any further. But Jesus, hearing this, answered him and said, Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe and trust in me and have faith in my ability to do this, and she will be made well. He allowed no one to enter in with him except Peter and John and James, and the girl's father and the girl's mother. Now they were all weeping loudly and mourning for her. And he said, Do not weep, for she's not dead, but she's sleeping. Then they all began to laugh scornfully at him, ridiculing him, knowing without any doubt that she was dead. But Jesus took a hold of her hand and spoke, saying, Child, arise. Now that's a very strong prophetic proclamation that's going to be made by the end of today. 
arise, come into your being. And her spirit returned and she got up immediately and he ordered that she be given something to eat. God is going to end the issue. You see, with so much going on in the world, why is this happening with Israel right now, Paula? What's going on? Why are there so many wars? And what, 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 it just seems like so much pressure. What's happening? Before the end of the program, I believe that God's going to deal with your individual issue, which is bring wholeness to you. And we'll hit that first through his word. But then I believe it's a bigger prophetic portrait that is about to position you for the greatest revival, the greatest outpouring, the greatest move of God that has ever been in this earth. How do you know that? Because God's word shows us. So let's get into it. In verse 45, it says, who touched me? In verse 46, it says, somebody touched me. But in verse 48, it says, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Now this is really interesting because when the woman comes with her issue, she's a who. Then when she touches, says, somebody touch me. And then when he feels virtue leave him, he says, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now here's what is so significant. It's the only time Jesus called anyone a daughter, which is a word for the kingdom. Now the kingdom of God in the Greek is the basileia. It means the royalty, the rule, and the realm. Remember that Jesus' main message was repent, the kingdom of God has come. So this is vitally important because it's a who. It tells me no matter how you come to Jesus, a complete mess, a wreck with all the issues, cheating on your husband, cheating on your wife. You go, oh my goodness, lying, deceitful, manipulative, hateful, unforgiving, a child that's strung out on drugs. You see, the truth of it is, is all of us have issues. They might be different, but we also have issues. And when we come to Jesus with those issues, he doesn't judge us. He doesn't say, well, what got you into this condition? Oh, well, if doctors for 12 years couldn't heal you. He doesn't ask all the symptoms or the problems or the root or the diagnostics. He just, she touches him. She believes. And when she touches, he says, daughter, thy faith have made you whole. You see, wholeness is the fruit of her being positioned now as a daughter. There's something about daughter, daddy. It's intimate. It's relationship. And the positioning of her as a daughter was evidenced by the fruit of wholeness in her life. So what the enemy wants to do is to keep you fragmented, that you'll never be whole. Fragmented means to be detached, to be broken off, to fall into pieces or to be incomplete. Then you don't get to kingdom. Daughter, daughter. See, daughter meant that she was now part of the kingdom. This woman has three situations, a health crisis, an economic crisis, a social crisis. She has to be in isolation because of this disease she has, all which put her in a state of lacking wholeness. Now, whatever has put you in that state, let, let's look at what wholeness means. Really dive deep into it. Wholeness means without fragmentation, to be put together properly. It means free from deformity. It means spiritually, mentally, and emotionally sound. Now, if you're free from deformity, deformity means a change of shape or form through stress or injury. It's interesting because you know that I went through a situation called Ramsey Hunt. And that was where shingles hit my brainstem and really impacted my cranial nerve seven and eight. So part of my healing process is I got a nuclear brain scan. And they went in and they were able to literally see there were parts on the outside that, that they could look at my brain. And they and the doctor said to me, Dr. Amen, he said, Paula, you've had concussion. I was like, oh yeah, I did when I was nine years old. He goes, yeah, see that right there? It's lost its shape. He goes, you had a really severe concussion. I said, yeah, when I was nine, I was on a, a, a snowboard and I hit a running car. How you forget that? Of course, I didn't have a parent around. And so I did what you shouldn't do. I went home and slept about the worst thing you can do, but what happens when you're nine? And he started going over the terrain of my brain 
and he could show me everything that had just happened in my, not just at that Ramsey hunt, but in my entire life, why? Because an injury made an impact that literally changed the shape of it. So that's important because when you're not whole, deformity means that because something injured you, it changed the shape of who you are. Now let's look at that. You see, the situation, whether it's a financial crisis or maybe it was a childhood abandonment or maybe you were abused or whatever that situation is, it either molds you into his image or it changes you through the stress or the injury. It presses you out of shape. So the question we ask ourselves is, do I resemble God? Do I reflect God's love, his character, his light? or has the shape in me changed? What do I mean? Am I emotionally reactive? Am I angry all the time, mad, and I just don't know why? Irritated, frustrated, afraid. Do I look at a molehill and turn it into a mountain? Is your gentleness gone? You see, the Holy Spirit didn't leave you during that crisis, during that situation and neither should his fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Galatians 5.22. So when I'm whole, I'm put together properly. To be whole means to grow, to wax, to enlarge, literally or actively, to give room for increase. So watch, if I'm not whole, there's no room for increase. So I can prophesy over you right now. I can pray over you right now. And I can declare and decree according to Job 28 and declare over you increase. I declare your increase. But if you're not touching the hem of his garment for his virtue, his power, his healing virtue to flow through you every single day, then you're not making room for increase. Because the enemy is always going to clutter you. He's going to mess your soul up. He's going to get you offended. He's going to bring up an old memory. He's going to cause a physical thing that activates that PTSD again. Remember the individual purpose that God has for you is to conform you into his image that you look like him, talk like him, think like him, walk like him. And out of that place, then as part of the bride, the church, we advance the kingdom. Now that's, a, that's, I think you understand that. If not, I'll keep explaining it or go to the website. I've got so many, te so much teaching YouTube, follow it all. But the importance is this, there's a place in God that we all long to be. And that place is a place of wholeness. That place is a place of maturity. It's a place of completion and fulfillment. It's where we're effective, it's where we're productive, it's where we produce, and it's where we are satisfied, where we live our lives to the fullest, regardless of external situations, because you never really get to control the outside, you're just not impacted by it. It can't move you. So this is a place in God of maturity that positions you for His ultimate purpose. It's a place of completion place of perfection, a place of fulfillment. But to get there, my issues, your issues have to come to an end. So let's deal with that a little bit more. This certain woman who had a condition, an issue of blood. Now issue in the Greek means to flow. It means to run. It means a current. So the current is the strongest part of the stream. Issue in the Webster means a discharge, something coming forth from a specified source. It's an outflow of an internal problem. You know, you can get around people. People in the world don't really know how to say this. They say there's an energy to that person. And that they're either meaning there's a negative energy or there's a positive one or there's no energy. But here's the reality. You send off signals every single day. Signals of love, signals of kindness, signals of goodness or not. And God in His ultimate love wants to change us. People see your outside until you are forced under enough pressure to manifest who you really are. See, pressure pulls out what's in you. 
David describes it in Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted or internally raging in me? He alludes to why I got there in verse 6. Oh my God, my life is cast down upon me and I find the burden more than I can bear. All right, what he's saying is I'm under so much pressure. Are you there? Too much anxiety, the divorce, the financial pressure, the custody battle. Are you there? Lost your job? Too much. Are you there? Not talking to the person that you thought you'd be your best friend for the rest of your life? Sounds like so many of us, you love God, but the burden that Satan put on you feels like more than you can despair. Life simply got too heavy. And this is the great challenge because it's not what happens to me on the outside, but how it affects me on the inside. You see, what do I do with the enemy of my inner me? What do I do when life gets so hard on me? That the pathological critic, that voice that just gnaws at me and says, you won't make it, you're no good, you won't survive this, the devil is a liar. Your issue is about to end. I decree that, I declare that, I want you to come with me. Even though there are people crushing Jesus, pressing into him, all you have to do is attach, just touch him today. This certain woman had this issue for 12 years. Now this is so significant because 12 is a number of government. It's not just authority, but something that governs, something that sets the pace and determines the speed of a thing. And often our issues determine our pace of life. Think what I'm saying to you. Could it be that your whole life, the entire purpose of God is being held up because you're not whole? And because of lacking wholeness, not because you're bad, not because you don't love God, because getting whole takes work. It takes pressing. It takes getting through the crowd. It takes action. It takes faith. And getting whole doesn't just fall out of the sky. Now, God does most of it, but we have to reach to activate that work in our life. You see, this woman who had this issue that governed her life, it dominated and ruled her. How long are you going to let your issue rule you? How long are you going to let it govern you? Here's a reality. Because of the nature of her malady, it could not be made public without exposing her to shaming content. Basically, she had to live in isolation, quarantined, because of this issue. She was so desperate that she went to physician after physician until it created an economic crisis in her life. The Bible says she spent all she had. Spent means to expend, to devour, an expense that's consuming, and she was nothing bettered. When she heard Jesus, there is a time limit to your issue. Jesus put a limit on the issue. Think of the man at the pool, 38 years, the woman in the synagogue, 18 years, the woman with the issue, 12 years, there is an end to your issue. And 12 is so important. She said, which means she repeated over and over again within herself, I shall be whole. Which means to be saved, to be rescued, to keep safe, to be sound, to be made whole. When the Bible says she touched Jesus, attached, attached, when she attached herself to Jesus, her touch brought virtue. Virtue is a miracle itself. And the purpose of a miracle is for perpetual and eternal change. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that if you just say, God, help me with my issue. God, I touch you right now. Jesus Christ, come to me right now. I just declare that God is bringing you a miracle and the issue is ending. The second thing that happened is her touch, her attachment, Stop the procession. It turned him around. You saying, God, I need you right now is gonna stop everything. My talking is gonna be like Charlie Brown and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's coming to you. Her touch, her attachment made him inquire. It got his attention. He looked and said, somebody touched me and it got her what she wanted. Your faith daughter has made you whole. Now, remember, I said that your individual 
issue is really a bigger part of the plan and even purpose of God. So here is this woman that comes and touches Jesus. She gets hold, but that's really not the story because what's Jesus doing? Jesus is on his way to Jairus' daughter. She went from being sick to being dead. And now it seems like Jesus doesn't make it on time because he's interrupted by this older woman who's got this issue. In essence, and how long has this older woman had this issue? For 12 years. In essence, what we're looking at is two generations, two problems. One answer, Jesus. God is moving everything into alignment right now, even with your issue. When the woman got a touch from God, the little girl got a miracle from God. It's all about timing. It's all about destiny. Two cycles within the clock. When the child is healed, the adult is healed. When the adult is healed, the child is healed. Are you getting what I'm saying here? I'm going to you in two ways. By the way, this issue in this text has to do with Adamic, meaning man-made. Can it be that we created man-made issues that are causing us to bleed, causing us to lose life? I don't know what that issue is, but when the child gets healed, the adult gets healed. When the adult gets healed, you've got it. The child gets healed because anyone who's ever been in therapy like myself knows that the, the adult acting out, the adult screaming like a little kid, the adult who walks away from abandonment, pushes you away. The adult with the issues is really the little child on the inside. When the child gets healed, the adult gets healed. When the adult gets healed, the child gets healed. The other part to that is this. When you ask God, what are you doing in the earth? You see, it wasn't until he healed the older generation of her issues, 12. She was not whole. She wasn't being governed properly. That the younger generation, who everybody thought was dead, but was not really dead, they were really just asleep, was awakened. You see, in order to move into what God is sovereignly doing in this earth, for the revival to come forth, for God's reformation to come forth, the older generation has to be made whole. We can't keep draining and bleeding. The younger generation has to be awakened. There's so much prophetic purpose to this, and I want you to know right now as I get ready to pray for you, that all God asks us is one thing. What activates all of it? A touch. I'm not asking you to do five steps, give a sacrificial offering, go take three dots of oil on your head and 10 communions. I'm not asking that. All I'm saying is just say yes, Jesus. Attach yourself with a true heart of faith that says, Paula, tired of living like this. What does it do? It activates the next generation to get up. How can that be? Because this is a pattern. This is a promise. This is a prophetic picture of what God's doing. It activates the inner child in you to be healed, all with a touch. In the name of Jesus right now, let every spirit of resistance, let every demonic spirit that is holding you back from attaching yourself to Jesus fully, from touching the hem of his garment, be broken off you right now in the name of Jesus. I release all over you. I release power of God. I release that virtue through Jesus Christ that died on a cross, crucified, buried in a borrowed tomb, but rose again on the third day and gave you a covenant of wholeness, John 10, 10, that you can have life and life more abundantly. Paula, what do I do when I touch him? You're in the crowd right now. You're just uh, whoever. But as you start pressing, you're a somebody. As you touch him, you're a daughter or a son. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, forgive me for all my sin. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Say, devil, let go of my life. I make a decision today. I say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, help me. Touch him right now. As you do, as the adult touches, the child gets healed. Whatever's held you back for years, that issue has just come to an end in the name of Jesus. As your issue has come to an end, I wanna give you an opportunity, send your prayer requests and your praise reports, but also to honor God in giving. Every time you give, this is great ground at Paula White Ministry, something supernatural happens. This is from Arlene, she said, Dear Pastor Paula, 
I really want to thank God for my employment breakthrough. I sent a prayer request to Paula White Ministries, prayed, stood on his promises, and repeated the Paula White Ministry Facebook declarations daily. I was speaking a suddenly acceleration over my situation, and that's exactly what my Abba Father did. I start my dream job within the best company in the industry on Monday. In fact, I received not one, but two offers on the same day, and both are brilliant companies. All the glory to God, and thank you so much for all your support and prayers from Paula White Ministry. I pray your ministry will be blessed and above measure. Arlene, I am so excited for you. God is no respecter of persons. If He did it for Arlene, He'll do it for you. Whatever is stopping you from being all that God's called you to be, which God's called you to be blessed. God's called you to walk in provision. God's called you to be the head and not the tail. So get up right now, honor God, honor God in faith. And this is great ground. There will be a day you stand before the Lord in heaven. And you'll say, how did I receive all this reward? Because everything you do down here for the kingdom, it matters. It makes a difference. So pick up that phone, call that toll free number, go to the website at paulawhite.org. You can give also by cash app. You can text to give. It's all on there. Vimeo, it's all on there. It's not how you give. It's that you give. So thank you in advance for standing with us. God bless you. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hebrews 13.8 Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. Luke 6.38 If God is speaking to you to be a blessing and sow a generous ministry gift into the fertile soil of Paula White Ministries, call the toll-free number, go to the website, write the P.O. Box, or simply text PWM to the number 45777 right now from your smartphone. Your generous support will help millions of people through this ministry, including reaching the world with the priceless gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, transforming lives, healing hearts, and winning souls every day through this television program and the live preaching ministry of Paula White Kane and Jonathan Kane. Our feeding outreaches, providing food, clothing, household furniture, and goods to those in need in the local community and around the nation. Our emergency relief efforts, providing quick response assistance with food and relief supplies to victims of natural disasters like Puerto Rico and war-torn areas like Ukraine. With other ministries around the nation and the world, going into prisons, ministering in the streets, and making a difference in communities. Thank you, and God bless you. Prayer changes things, and we want to pray for you today. Go to PaulaWhite.org slash prayer right now and send us your prayer request. One of our intercessors will receive it and immediately begin praying for you, declaring God's word over your life for your needs. 